Right, so thanks for the invite. Really exciting stuff, These, the, the ideas we just got presented. Um, you're going to... Okay, so I'll, I'd just like to share sort of my experience with you, um, if it can be of any use. The first thing is, obviously, I think we need to get over sort of the myths about not being able to set up a global business in Greece, because it's just not true. So I'll get that out of the way first. So it's perfectly doable to build a technology company in Greece which is entirely export-oriented. For that matter, I think it's doable to build any kind of business you like here. Um, and really, the focus of, of, of my talk is not so much to um, focus on what, on what we've done, but, but really look at what we've done through the filter of what would make sense for other people to do on the basis of what strengths Greece as a base might have, right? That's my, that's my sort of viewpoint here. Now, a few things about upstream very fast. Unbeknown to us, you know, the name of the company obviously implies s sort of swimming in a direction opposite to that of a stream's current. And in Greece, obviously, we'd had to do this a lot. Uh, building in 2001 a company that was entirely export-oriented, technology-oriented, nothing to do with government contracts. I mean, you're all very young, so I'll give you a picture. Uh, when I came back from the UK in 2000, it was still the age of the big Greek IT companies, like Intracom or Singular and these guys doing government contracts. Right, pretty much failed, all of them, on exports. Uh, so that's the first thing I came in touch with, right? This, this world of government contracts, and I don't want to say more. Um, so we had to kind of swim against the stream there, right? Um, an export technology company starting in Greece, right? Um, where we are today is we're, we're a relatively uh, successful company. Uh, we operate in, in quite a few countries. Uh, I, I, I'd like to sort of focus mostly on the fact that 70% of our employees are here. And of these employees, 10% have PhDs and 80% have master's degrees, right? So what was the experience like? Uh, when, when I came back from the UK, uh, obviously there was no VC money back then. I think there still isn't much here. Uh, so that was out of the question. Um, so we, we, we had to sort of um, go to banks, try to get some loans. That was not really doable either. So we were lucky enough to find uh, two angels. Uh, one actually uh, was, uh, was uh, I'd worked with before when I was an employee in, 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 in the UK. and. He was sort of the representative of that company in Greece. So talk about looking <laughs> literally next to what is the most feasible thing for you, what was what worked for me. And then this guy said, OK, yeah, I'll, I'll help you out. Um, I'll give you 300,000, which was a lot of money back then, and uh, still is. And um, then he introduced me to a friend of his from the software industry who gave us another 300. And that was the, an the two angel investors, the initial money we got. Uh, but we didn't look broadly. We looked close, right? The, the, the rest was really just chasing clients, right? This company grew from zero revenues to 40 million revenues in dollars before it went to VCs. So it was purely organic growth. We managed to get some big clients um, early on. And they kind of financed our growth because we were one of the first companies doing mobile marketing. So, uh, you know. We kind of presented it as an experiment to them. 
they trusted us, we were one of the first companies in the space, and, and we grew in this way, sort of quite organically, I'd say. Now, the one thing I can definitely tell you, because obviously a lot of people have given me advice, you know, I've given advice, uh, the bottom line is, you know, I don't believe in advice one bit, because most of the advice you get, and I love this quote from the sunscreen song, if you've heard it, the Buzz Lerman song, uh, is, you know, it is really a form of nostalgia. Most people will just look back at what they did, they will repackage everything and present you with this perfect picture, this perfect case study, which is why I kind of refuse to present my company and my experience as anything other than, to a large extent, hard work and random, definitely not some kind of predictable case study uh, you can learn from, right? So I'll, I'll skip that part about trying to be uh, sort of, uh, you know, the, the, the perfect history with predictable moves and all that, because it's just not like that. Uh, so the path to success, uh, you know, the, the, the first of all, the, you know, the, the, there's a path and then there's success, okay? There are many, many different paths and there are many, many different definitions of success. And, and, and I, I'll tell you one thing, uh, in my mind, the key question to ask is, you know, uh, what is it that I really want? And can I consistently be true to myself in what I'm pursuing? Example, right? Path. You can start by chasing VCs. You can start by being an organically grown business. You can do the path part many different ways. On success, right? You might want to build a hundred million, one billion dollar company. You might not want to build a $100 million company, you might want to build a nice, solid $1 million company, or a $500,000 company. All I'm saying is everyone is really different, so it's, it's kind of really important before you start to think about what you really want, uh, how do you define success, how do you define happiness, because I've seen plenty of people just, um, I guess, become the pirate in some way, like Eric said before, right? Uh, not all of us are pirates, right? You can learn how the pirates talk and how they walk, but that doesn't mean that you're going to become one of them. So I, 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 I'd, I'd start by asking that question. Who, I am, who am I? What would make me happy? What is it that I want to achieve? And that will probably define to a large extent the kind of company you, you are most likely uh, to be happy with building. Now, because I can't psychoanalyze every one of you, um, I'll, I'll have to kind of take the national perspective here, because actually I do, I do believe in it to some extent. So I, I'll just say, okay, if I was to look at us as a nation, right, what kind of business would I be investing in, which I do, and, or what kind of business might I be beginning, starting over maybe as my next business, right? What's the right thing? And what did I do wrong so far? So looking at Greeks, I'd say we have some pretty extraordinary advantages, right? We are well bordering to over-educated, right? There's some extraordinarily well-educated Greeks, I'd say mostly from Politechnio, uh, who then usually go on to study in pretty amazing places like MIT or, or, or Imperial in London or whatever. So th there's a, an amazing reservoir of fantastic people, uh, and that might include a lot of you. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we, we're quite, a, quite very extroverts as people, uh, and, and naturally, we're also extroverts in terms of the way we do business, right? Our natural instinct is to travel, um, hence I've used Ulysses here, uh, and our natural instinct is to look for um, opportunities abroad. That's a big advantage. We're very flexible, very cosmopolitan. We operate really well in small units, pragmatic, as sprinters, hardworking, inventive, good negotiators, a nation of small entrepreneurs, pretretty much what this country was from 1945 until, until about 1981 or 1980, 1979, right? Don't mean to be political, right? Um, so uh, the, the, next, the, next, the next thing is, okay, so what, what are we not? I mean, in my mind, you know, the Karagiosis is like the flip side of Ulysses. They, they have a lot in common, right? But Karagiosis kind of went wrong somewhere. But they're very similar in many ways, right? If you take uh, away from Ulysses his, his honor, his, his valor, his courage, and you stick with his opportunism, pragmatism, flexibility, you, you do end up with someone like Karagiosis, by the way, right? So w what are we not? Uh, I, I don't think we're methodical and consistent. Uh, I don't think we're particularly disciplined. We're, we're not naturally long-term planners. 
uh, we're not uh, big team players, patient, and most of all, we're, we're not particularly humble, right? Um, now, why is all this useful, right? I mean, I think it's useful because it, 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 it excludes certain possibilities as being likely and makes some other possibilities in terms of businesses that might be successful a lot more likely. Now, what are the big small countries that are good examples for Greeks, Finland, Nokia, you know, um, uh, Korea, uh, maybe, I don't know, Singapore, etc. All I'm saying is with these kinds of characteristics, you're not going to get a Nokia, right? Uh, so the idea of a big IT company in Greece, unlikely, highly unlikely, because we, ju we just don't have these skills come naturally to us. On the other hand, flexible businesses uh, that are relatively smaller in terms of team and serve particular niches and problems are a lot more likely, right? We are, after all, a nation of small shopkeepers or small manufacturing units where we used to be. So I guess, you know, the next thing is the, the role models. And I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really kind of big on this. Uh, using Instagram as a role model, which I think a lot of the startup community in, in most countries, but even in Greece, use, uh, is, is, is really bad for us because it plays on our weaknesses. Because we are impatient. We're, we have this natural instinct for shortcuts, right? And we're just like that, most of us, most Greeks. So you give them an Instagram, and it's exactly what they want to hear. Because in two years, these guys made a billion, right? They didn't have a business model, right? They produced a good product. Uh, they had strong VC funding, rapid growth, spectacular exit. Uh, all I'm saying here is that another role model, like maybe 37 Signals, which is much closer to the Greek psyche, right? Few people identified a specific problem, devised a rather simple, at least for the user, solution to that, remained and remains a rel relatively small group of people, no complications with external funding, uh, you know, and grew this business to become a very successful business and no, no sort of quick exits, no shortcuts, I think, you know, is, is a better role model if you, if you want to think about it that way. So, I guess the point here is the odds of success for a Greek entrepreneur, I think, is not in the kind of Silicon, a lot of the Silicon Valley role models. That's the truth. And I know, you know, I've been, I, I've been uh, involved with, with, with US VCs, and I, I can tell you two things. First, uh, the amount of investment that they make outside the US is in the order of maybe two or three percent of their total investments. And uh, actually the amount of investments they make on the East Coast, I mean the West Coast VCs, is, 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 is actually something like 20 percent. Right? So it's, it's all in California. Now, uh, statistically, the odds, not great. Okay? On the other hand, statistically the odds of building a cash generative business, just like any other business, organically growing it, putting money in your pocket from year one. And at some point, if you want to grow it more, give it a boost, you go to, say, European VCs like Mangrove or Axel that exists in, in, in Europe or Greylock Israel, or, you know, they're, they're not that many, they're about 10, 12, okay? But that's what I would, you know, logically do first before I get on a plane to go to the valley. Okay, uh, you got better chances that way. Uh, so I guess the fortune sort of aspiring to sell to fortune 5 million companies instead of fortune 500 companies and aspiring to be a company that is just like any other company that has been around for 100 plus years as opposed to these exceptions that become role models like Instagram or Facebook or Google, I think, you know, is a healthy thing because there's absolutely nothing wrong with building a business in that way, and you don't know where it's going to take you. It might take you to great places, right? Uh, whereas the other, you just set up yourself for failure, right? There's too high expectations. Now, the, my two cents in terms of uh, what, what I've seen is it makes sense to start with something you know and understand well, 
Um, it really does. And uh, it, it makes sense to build your team very wisely with complementary skills and personalities. You know, if you're, if you're a really impatient guy, make sure you get a patient partner. Uh, the trying to solve a specific pro problem simply, uh, not, not being a generalist, which has been a, a, a plague in Greece, because the market is small, everybody wants to be a generalist, right? And if you're not focused, it's impossible to penetrate a global market. You've got to focus on a niche or a very specific area if you want to make it. And uh, definitely anywhere in the world, and I think, you know, emphasis on customers, we listen, you should, you know, definitely listen more and talk less. Be patient, take your time. And w one thing that, that, that I think is important is, you know, in this journey that, that I've had, I the, the one thing that's helped me is just not taking myself too seriously. Because the more seriously you take yourself, the bigger you, the bigger an ego you create, and then the bigger the, fe the fear of failure becomes, right? So I I if you, I you want to sort of manage your life and your choices o o over what is actually a pretty uh, interesting but also uh, difficult adventure, it, it's, it, it pays to, to, to uh, sort of not take yourself too seriously, right? And be prepared for failure. And it's fine. It's okay, right? You'll do it again, no problem. And another thing is, you know, there's this huge divide in everyone's mind be be between the entrepreneur versus the employee, you know. And it's like almost talking about the alpha male, right? Uh, in reality, it's, it's just not like that, you know. I, you can be an employee and then become an entrepreneur and then become an employee again, and then maybe you become a professor, and then maybe you do something else, and then maybe you're a father. These kind of etiquette, you know, these kinds of labels, I'm an entrepreneur, right? I, it, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just not, not, you know, true to life, I think. And uh, finally, you know, I, I think the, 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 the value of being self-reliant, uh, as Shakespeare said, neither a lender nor a borrower be. Uh, uh, when Polonius sent, he sent uh, his son Laertes, uh, off on his travels. You know, I still believe that. It's a pretty traditional uh, sort of <laughs> belief, I guess. Uh, but, but, you know, it makes you a lot more free to make choices, right? Decide, uh, be in control of your destiny. And um, I think, finally, you know, just throughout this journey, uh, you learn to be more, 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 more content and, and more balanced, uh, because otherwise you, you will burn out, right? So you take good care of yourself. Uh, and always don't, you know, take advice or what you see too seriously. Um, it's not, not a good guide. And uh, in terms of sort of a, a funny photo I received the, the other day, which kind of I found inspiring uh, in terms of what we're trying to do, I guess, everyone here, which is uh, start uh, for once uh, rebuilding, um, you know, this, 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 this damn place and uh, creating new businesses. These five case studies, I th you know, these five, th these five pitches, I, I found some of them pretty amazing. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, th this is, you know, this is, this is a good time to start. And the main reason why it's a good time is because w f for once we've started talking openly about our failures, right? And the minute you start talking about your failures openly, you can probably rebuild. By the way, this is my friend Dan who used to be the, independent, uh, the independence correspondent in Greece. And this is a photo he sent me from Somalia the other day in light of tomorrow's uh, football match. It reads, uh, Elare Guni, if you can't see it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>